This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy, Netflix, and Graphic Audio. So it's good, right? You like it? It's good. You like it? It's, it's, I mean, that's that's really good, right? It's, it's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really awesome. And that you, I mean, that's that's really the stuff you've got there is real great. That's it's, yeah, that's yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. just fantastic. I mean, it's, I have no excuse. Yeah, it's really. I mean, you guys are so lucky to be reading this stuff. Hey, welcome to iFanboy. I'm Ron. I'm Josh. <laughs> I'm Connor. And this weekend, it's a big weekend for comic fans because The Dark Knight came out. I know. And everyone's yeah. probably really excited about Batman. And so we thought what we'd do today was talk to you about some really great Batman stories. So what if we're... you can't get enough Batman. Right. If you're Dark Knight Returns. If you're all jazzed up for Batman. Batman year one. <laughs> and you want to hear iFanboy's top five Batman stories that aren't. Dark Knight Returns. Or. Batman year one. Or Arkham <laughs> Asylum because we talk about those books a lot here. Yep. Here's the top five Batman stories that we're presenting to you. So first up is actually quite a little unusual, but it's really important if you don't know. This is Batman, Son of the Demon. Mm. This is actually an OGN. It is an this OGN. Was an, Original the, graphic the, uh, a different uh, aspect ratio. Yeah, this is one of the. Oh, this is back Format. When, they, when they weren't. Yeah, aspect Dress. ratio. Yeah, that's aspect ratio. Yeah. Size. Down. Back when they didn't do this a lot, this was unusual. Yeah. This was in 1987, yeah. um, and this was a originally out of continuity story of Batman and Ra's al Ghul and Talia and. Why this is important now is because this issue ends with the birth of Batman's son, Damien, Damien. Damien. who is important now in the, in the current Batman books. Talia is, the, is Ra's al Ghul's daughter. Right. And if you saw so, the first Batman movie, Batman, Ra's al Ghul was the international terrorist that Batman quite often fought. And one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this beyond Damien was because I started reading comics regularly in the mid, early mid-80s, and I'd buy a lot of back issues. I'd always buy back issues. And, and in the 70s and 80s, he would often fight internationally. Batman would be found in the desert, in the He's jungle. He globetrotter. Neil Adams and those guys always had him off somewhere else that wasn't Gotham City. Yeah. And I think it's, it's important. And it was always, almost always Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. And that was, for, for many, many, many years, he was a major villain in the books. And more so than you see him more than you see him the Joker, Two-Face, you'd see Ra's mm-hmm. almost, almost exclusively. And I wanted to highlight a story that was told of, with Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. And, and it's just fantastic. I mean, you guys hadn't read this before. I gave this to you for the show. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the art from Jerry Bingham, who's a name you never hear. I've never or, heard that name. I never heard it either. And you, you, you were blown I was, away. I, was, I actually read this a few years back. You yeah. got me this book because um, Connor buys gifts of books that he really likes, even if you won't. Just pushes the button. <laughs> yeah. Just... And I, I read it, and I was like, no, it's okay. And uh, coming back later, I'm a more, I guess I'm a, I'm a better comic book reader. Yeah. I'm able to appreciate stuff, yeah. I guess, a little more. This is a gorgeous book. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is... Uh, it, it's like Neil Adams. I, I use that comparison a lot, but it really it's is. Styles, yeah, it's, it's, it's influenced a lot by Neil Adams, but I think what is most interesting, beyond the, for, the, the format size change, mm-hmm. it, it, the coloring, we were talking about this earlier, the coloring and the, um, and the composition, mm-hmm. for when it came out, like I couldn't believe this came out in 1987. The, the color palette is actually yeah. very similar to Dark Knight Returns. It's like a, yeah. slightly muted, it's slightly washed out. Yep. Um, it's it's not as, as like back then you'd have a lot of four, four color comics. Yeah, know? there wasn't a lot of shading yeah. There wasn't a color. shading or subtlety in the colors. Where this is the color is very subtle in this yeah. book. It's, it's really yeah. really nice. Yeah. And there's just some really nice big pages. Yeah. And the the I don't know. It's it's very classic. It's very very classic. But like it's of the best kind of classic. And it's funny when remember when the movie came out the, the eighty nine Batman movie the Tim Burton and there was the Batman movie stuff that cha- everywhere. Movie that changed your life. Yeah. This I have this shirt. Oh, well, you did? Oh, shirt. you too? Yep. Oh, wow. I had that shirt. Oh! Yeah, that's where this is from. <laughs> Sweet! I yeah. totally had that shirt. I yeah. love that it's shirt. It's a great image. Did you have the big Joker head from, from Killing Joke? I did. I, I, I didn't buy as many Joker shirts. Yeah. Oh, I... But, so the story of Batman, Son of the Demon I is... I Joker for Halloween. Is, um... Uh, there's this guy you get named. The face. We'll get to the Joker. You have the kind of the Joker face. You do. Yeah. Guy... <laughs> guy... Don't do that ever again. Uh, there's a guy named. Kane. My mother won't let me do that. <laughs> I, I see around. why. Yeah. But, uh, there's a guy named Kane who's who's murdering people, and Bomb. Kane is connected to Ra's al Ghul. He was Michael. he was the son of Ra's al Ghul's friend, who in Ra's al Ghul's organization, he was one of his lieutenants. Mm-hmm. And Kane was someone Ra's al Ghul raised when the parents died. When he was a young man, he accidentally killed Roz's wife and Talia, his daughter. Well, oh, he'd it. sent them on a mission in Hir- Hiroshima, Hiroshima, and then the Americans blew them up. Right. Uh, so he indirectly blamed him. Yeah. So, so there's all this connection. Kane's out of control. As often happens, Batman is called to uh, Roz's side, and they have a tenuous partnership for a while. And then I, I love. 
and I always have. I sort of forget about it, but I love the grudging respect. It's not yeah. a grudging. The respect yeah. that they have for yeah. one another. Yeah. I love it's how... It's so much more complex than just I hate you. I love yeah. how Raj Al Ghul calls him detective. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's on... And the best moment in this book, by the way, um, and it, it almost makes no sense, because uh, it, it's probably based on stuff that had happened before, mm -hmm. but uh, they decide we're going to have a partnership, and they're about to go, uh, and then he goes, there's one, there's one other... A factor of this partnership that you must agree to before we go forward. And he's like, yes. And he's like, you have to marry my daughter. Which has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> and then Batman in one panel goes, okay. <laughs> he just he's, I'm down. Well, he's always loved Talia. But, yeah. but, but, but back to the kid thing. This is um, the birth of the kid happens because there's sex in this book. Yeah. And when I bought this, I was 10 years old. This is one of the first times where I was like, What's going on here? What are they taking this, their clothes off? Oh my God, they're they're doing something. They're they're they're, they're doing something dirty. Yeah. Um, it's not. I, I wouldn't say this book is for kids. No, it's so, very very bloody. So as ten years old. I was a very forward thinking reader. No one watched what this kid no. was buying. No idea. Um, very bloody for for the time. I mean, now it might not, it would probably be still considered bloody, but it's really bloody for '87. Mm -hmm. Rib cage gets ripped out. Rib cage. Oh. He he likes to crush people's heads because. Kane is really, really strong, and he puts his head around your skull. And just goes, Batman didn't have a problem with people getting killed in this. A yeah. lot of people got shot. Like he taught yeah. all the all the. Um, Ross's people how to train. He trained them. He trained them in non-lethal combat. Type, right. But people got shot. People were still running around with guns. I yeah. mean, oh. he wasn't as militant like now. You see, he won't let anybody die. But mm -hmm. back then, it's kind of like, well, uh, I didn't do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it was me. Bloody, sexy, <laughs> and it's it's just it's a very ahead of its time graphic novel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, Grant Morrison brought it back into relevance with. So it. now it's in continuity. If you're the, for anybody reading current Batman yep. stories, the sun exists. Um, yep. and it's a little it like it's a little weird, like because like when Talia shows up, like there's like this repartee and yeah. this like sexy it's talk. Tension, and you're like yeah. he's boy, you let her in. This was easy. this was the era that Grant was try was saying he wanted to return to was the globetrotting, sexy yeah. Batman. I can definitely Grant see Morrison, that. the current writer. Right? Um, and it's weird to see Batman and having sex. I'm just gonna say. It. Well, there you go. I'm not saying <laughs> he shouldn't. It, it, I'm just saying hey, it's weird listen, to see the, it. The panels aren't all that explicit. No, no, but for for the time, <laughs> yeah. for ten years yeah. old. No, I mean, yeah, you were obviously influenced by it. I'm sorry, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Good will hunting. Can you show me where Batman touched you? <laughs> Use the stall. He goes. He goes. <laughs> We're talking about Batman today, and I thought it'd be nice if I went ahead and ordered some props. So I went to what I thought was maybe a reputable site on the internet to order something Batman related. Uh, what they ended up sending me was this stuffed pink flamingo. Um, and unless this was in a movie I didn't see or a book I haven't read, this is not Batman. The lesson learned here is when you are ordering stuff off the internet, make sure you do it from a reputable site like GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy.com has all you need for your domain name needs. They have great support service. So head over to GoDaddy.com. If you enter the coupon code iFanboy, you get 10% off your entire purchase. And that's awesome. The next book we're going to talk about um, is Killing Joke. Batman Killing Joke. And this is... Um, Many people's best favorite Batman story, I think. I Alan actually, Morris. I actually um, it, this is written by Alan Moore and it's drawn by the great Brian Bolland. This yeah. is actually the last comic book Brian Bolland's drawn. He's just superhero. only done superhero comic. Well, no, not last comic, like sequential Did comic a short story, story in oh. Fables One Thousand One Nights. Well, yes. So that's not but a full he, comic. He does. He he only does covers now or one off things like that mm -hmm. um, because he can get more money that way and all that kind of deal. But. Um, but the, Legend is that he said I already did the best superhero story I could do. And I'm I recently reread this, and I will go as far as say this is the best Batman story I've ever read, and I think the best Batman story ever. It's very possible. If the thing about Batman, Batman Dark Knight. The thing about Batman is he's so varied. Like I wouldn't want to say this is the best. This right. is whatever. The this, single story. There's nothing better. Yes. Yeah. There are things that are as good, and I'd like them all in the same pantheon. Right. But uh, it's good. So, so this is very famous because this is the this is the story where the Joker cripples Barbara Gordon and turns her in. You know, she. This is the end of her Batgirl career. Shoots in the spine. And it spawns her as being Oracle. And this is where it happened. This is where he breaks into. Her apartment shoots her right through the spine. No. Takes pictures. Well, then it gets. This is very. First of all, this is very adult. This is Alan Moore telling a very adult Batman story. He not only cripples Barbara Gordon, but then he he sexually abuses her, takes photos of it, and then he uses that to torture uh, Jim, Gordon. Jim Gordon, with who he kidnaps later on. This is a very dark story. The, it's dark, but what I thought was really fascinating is that Alan Moore. Alan Moore is known for a little bit of the weird, 
you know, with uh, some of the stuff like the Swamp Thing stuff, and then and then uh, you know, Watchmen was a little more you know kind of dark and you know, but then he does stuff that's kind of out there, right? This I thought was very not out there. Swamp Thing's not that out there. Well, well, but to some people it is. Some, it's a stretch for some people. Have you ever read it? Yeah, yes, but uh, anyway. Um, now, the thing is, is that um, what I thought was really interesting was I love the setup of it starts with Batman going to Arkham to visit the Joker, and he's saying, listen, I've had enough of this. One, we're gonna, one of us is going to kill the other. I and love I, I, how... And I want that to stop, and I don't want that to happen. I love how, how um, just sort of matter-of-fact Batman is in this, yeah. in talking to him. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's the same, they sort of have the same conversation at the end of the book as well. Well, it, it's, it, it recounts that. In, right, in, but it's in, very on more yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. It circles back. It circles yeah. back. And I just thought that was just so elegant and a way to frame the story because this really is, should be the last Batman-Joker story. And I, I want to mention something quickly a, before we move on is that way back we talked about um, Kevin Maguire and how much yeah. you like that he drew the fabric of the costumes. Yeah. There's a panel that has always stuck with me and it's the panel where the Joker yes. pokes Batman in the eye with the fingers and he pulls the mask down. That was one of the first times where you can see how kind of ridiculous it is to be wearing these things. Right, yeah. yeah. Like you see the whole cloth sort of pull half his face and down. And then the was... next, when he bonks him over the head with the, the, the plank, you can see it's still all out of place. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's not, so it's not a hard... Right. So Surf first of all, Brian Bolland is is a freaking genius. Art is amazing. The art yeah. was, I mean, it starts off in a very Dave Gibbons Watchman esque kind of way with mm-hmm. the with Panels. the panel grid and, yeah. and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But he 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 totally makes it his own. Yeah. He totally, I mean, like, I Bolland love his was a, Batman. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. his Batman. I love his pre Joker Joker. Yeah. Yep. And I love like there's the panel with the um, basically he goes in to talk to Joker at Arkham and it's not Joker. Yeah. yeah. That's the that's terror weird. on that guy's face. Yeah. Like is all. Was like, this your T-shirt? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the ha ha ha. T-shirt show. Yeah, um, uh, it, it's just. And the I lo- was a dork. The other thing, well, I had. I, you know how many T-shirts I had in that. Did you have the Did you have the Batman Converse All Stars? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I talked a lot of shit for wearing those in school too. Me too. Losers. That that was that was rough. Losers. Uh, this is the supposedly the origin of the Joker. Now the yeah. official line is that it's maybe the origin of the Joker. They don't they don't want an official origin. Tragic. Of the Joker. I mean, I've really I fell for the Joker in this. Yeah, this this can be if you want it to yeah. be. They, they leave it open to yeah. you for you to, to read to interpret. And recently, I'm, I'm holding the uh, recently released hardcover edition. Uh, Brian Bolland went through and recolored it. Yeah. Um, so Connor's got a very old trade uh, paperback version. Yeah. Um, subtle differences in the tone and the coloring and they stuff like that. They changed the lettering on the cover. They did change. I used to notice that too. I yeah, like, they, they changed the lettering on the yeah, cover. That's yeah, that's not good. Um, no. But um, I, I mean, I personally, I mean, we're, we're, we've been arguing about this. I think it looks beautiful recolored and the hardcover, beautiful, great frame based library. It just, it's a good it one. It looks great. Yeah. It's just different, and yeah. I didn't see anything wrong with it. This before. one's more yeah. psychedelically colored. Yeah. I love it. It's more yeah. in, to- in tone with the idea the that it's all in the Joker's head, maybe. It's, it's yeah. colored like like the first Manhunter movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's but, really um, Michael Mann's if film. You're, you know, if you've never read, this is, this is, a, this is a must read. By yeah. the way, I love the ending Spec- of this. Yes. Yeah. It's the most cathartic moment in the history of, my, of, of superhero comics. I think it is too. And coming off of the Dark Knight, Joker feature prominently. If you want some more Joker fix, yep, this is definitely a rally. So, and you don't even have to be a big Batman fan. No, this not is at just all. a great comic. No, I, I, I don't like. I mean, I'm not a Batman fan, and this uh, keeps me enthralled. Every Hold time. me back. All right. Um, now I've been waiting all day. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Graphic audio is a unique audio entertainment experience that features a full cast of actors, sound effects, and cinematic music that creates a movie in your mind. Graphic Audio has published over 300 action adventure and science fiction titles, including the recently released DC Comics' Batman the Stone King. Upcoming DC Comics releases include Superman the NeverEnding Battle, The Flash Stop Motion, Wonder Woman Mythos, and Green Lantern Heroes Quest. Go to graphicaudio.net, type an iFanboy into the coupon code when you purchase CDs or MP3 CDs, and receive 40% off your first total purchase. Brought to you by graphicaudio.net, a movie in your mind. <laughs> so now we get some weird shit happened before the show, you know what I mean? Um... Bat- now you get to this is a very famous story Batman a death in the family now you get um, this, is, this is my first Batman this is your first Batman yes okay Jason Todd is the second Robin the first Robin Dick Grayson he, he quits he, difference of opinion with Batman he goes off to become Nightwing with the big with the big uh, the collar. 70's collar so the, the, he, Batman finds a new partner Jason Todd who actually was funny he found him and then he was retconned out in Crisis and they brought him back after Crisis yep. which was weird he had told two totally different origins um, well, the, the, the classic the, Jason Todd origin is that he figured out who Batman was and stole the hubcaps off the Batmobile. No, 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 that was Tim Drake. Oh, that was Tim Drake? The first origin he was, was... No, he he steals the hubcaps off the... The it Batmobile. Is. The first origin is he was a, he was exactly Dick Grayson. He was a circus kid whose parents were killed by Killer Croc. Oh, that's so awful. They, they retconned that out. They turned him into a street tough who was stealing the hubcaps off the Batmobile. Did he have s- no sleeves? Yeah, I think he had a leather jacket on. Ah, uh, there you go. See, the leather sleeves are no sleeves. So, anyway, he was an asshole. 
Yeah. No one liked Jason Todd. He was he he suffered from from coming right after Dick Grayson, who everybody loves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they wrote him as kind of a jerk because they wanted to play up the street tough side, and no one really wants the street tough Robin. So who he was like Brian asshole. Robbins from Head of the Class. But but but. <laughs> The Asseler. leather jacket and hood. But Asseler. he was smart. And less mullity. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, he was smart. Yeah, no, no, so um, what happens is they decided, all right, we're going to maybe get rid of Robin. They gave readers a choice. They said, um, you can call 1-800 number. He's going to live one or die. 1-900 number. It was a 1-900 number. Right. number. It cost money. Call. Yes. Who called it? I did. I, I did. I was and what did we say? Kill him. Kill him. Hang him. So in this <laughs> First story. First we kill him. <laughs> and then we hang him. I say we let him You had this four-issue story that took place within the Batman book. And the first two issues happened, and then after the second issue came out was when you was when you called, mm-hmm. and then they had two versions of the fourth issue. But the third issue was where the death happened. Yeah. The thing. So um, basically, this is a huge. I mean, this is a huge Batman. This, this informs almost everything he does now because he's so haunted by the death yes. of Jason Todd, yeah. even though fucking Jason Todd's back. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, blame Jason. Anyway, so the setup is this: is that is it Robin? He was an or- he was someone who who found he was found on the street and he didn't know his mother. Uh, this is he finds out somebody knows who his mother is. He goes all around the world. One of them he thinks is Lady Shiva. It's not Lady Shiva. Shiva. Um, he finally finds his mother. She's working in the in she's working in the Middle East. Yeah. And then the, some, the Joker's there doing a bomb uh, arms deal it's with all, Iran. It's, it's very Conflict. coincidentally yeah. framed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like he, they happen to know all three of the women. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Joker ha- literally happens to be involved with. And the I told us it. And and then oh, I mean. <laughs> This book is crazy. <laughs> it really I read is. this. I mean, like it's mid '80s. I it's, mean, it's, it's classic. Late 80s, late 80s. Late 80s. It's got yeah. this combination of it's violent. Yeah. When when the, when Joker beats Joker Robin to death with a crowbar. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like whack 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 whack. Yeah. yeah. And, and even and, though it's off camera, uh-huh. the look on the Joker's face. You it's don't actually. Grizzly. You don't really. You see him hit him once, I think, in the beginning, and then there's yeah. nine panels of him whacking him. Yeah. But it's 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 violent. Yeah. And and then and then he goes to work as the ambassador to Iran in the United so he, Nations. So, so Batman can't touch him. Crazy. <laughs> I mean, like really, and, and like people get shot in this, and, and it's it's, it's so a weird. The Joker is the ambassador. And he's wearing he's wearing the yeah, he's wearing the garb. One frame where it's a photorealistic panel of panel of the Ayatollah Khomeini. Yeah, I know. And you're just like. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> it's just, it's it's awful, um, but it's it's important. I mean, not awful in quality, but it's, it's awful to read the death of Robin. It's affected every Batman story since. Yeah. Uh, I really liked, um, at the end, um, like there's like there's a desperation to Batman that you don't ever see. Yeah. His, his humanity comes out, I guess, when he's basically, um, at the end, you never know if the bad guy dies or not, but... Uh, there's an explosion. Well, it's funny because he's they, like, "Find the body," and he's so desperate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he has a conversation with the Joker. The, the Joker's about to disappear. And actually, after this, you didn't see the Joker for a couple of years. Good. They yeah. kept it all going for a while, where you yeah, didn't know good. if he was dead or alive. Um, one thing I'd forgotten completely about this was Jim Starlin wrote this. Jim Starlin is the man. Yeah, Jim Starlin. Starlin is good. Starlin Assance, I think. Yeah. Right. Starlin Assance. Just to help me get some background, you know, a little in a character, maybe I, I went ahead and ordered some DVDs from a uh, well, we'll say a not reputable DVD site. They haven't come yet. I'm shooting the pro line and get to watch them all. Lesson learned here: head to Netflix.com. Netflix has over 90,000 titles, including Blu-ray titles. They ship them to your house. They get there in about a day, maybe less. I don't think that's true, but they get there really quick. And you send them back. There's no delivery fees. It's great. www.netflix.com slash ifanboy gets you a two-week free trial. So you can get the movies that you want, you can get them now. Now this leads to the next book, which I don't actually have a copy of because I only have it in issues, which was um, A Lonely Place of Dying, which is now collected in a trade paperback. But it was, in, it was I have notes here, Batman 440, 442, and New Teen Titans 61 and 62. It, it crossed over. Basically, this was the birth of Tim Drake, the third Robin. Yeah. So people now, I know a lot of people who watch the show and, and uh, go to the site, love Tim Drake. From, He's a good character. From the recent issues. He's a damn good character. And if you don't know how he came about, then this is the book for you. Basically, what happened was, a few years after Death in the Family, they decided that we need a Robin again. Batman, Batman End? Probably a copyright thing, because they, they have to keep yeah. characters around. Um, so what they, had, what they had to do was they, 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 they drove Batman over towards the edge. He was getting angry and violent, and he wasn't really using his brain. He was just beating the hell out of anybody he could find. Like Daredevil. And, he was kind of like Daredevil when he was when he was all depressed. Now. Yeah. So what happened? They had Tim Drake show up, and he was actually he was nine years old. Just, you know the ridiculous nature of the, of the comic books. That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. That's just um, he 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 figured out who Batman was. He used his brain. He put some clues together. He'd seen a, He had met Dick Grace when he was an acrobat. Saw him pull a move when he was Robin on the news, and said he saw he that's the same guy. And then he figured out he figured out Jason Todd died. You know, he basically put all the pieces he, he, together. Yeah. 
and he decided Batman needed a Robin because ever since Robin died, he's been out of the crazy. So he go he he How tracks. How nine year old know? Because he's really smart. That's what Tim Drake is. They he didn't even have the internet then. He's he tracks Batman. down Dick Grayson, which is where you come in with the Teen Titans issues, and says, "I know who you are. I know Batman's going crazy. I know he he needs you back as Robin." And that's the whole thing where Aww, I was really excited so because. I was young, I didn't understand. I thought, oh, they're going to bring back Dick Grayson. He's yeah. going to be Robin again. And the most we ever got was him standing in front of the case with the Robin suit and the reflection of him in the Robin costume. But more nice. importantly, he got leggings. Which yes. I think, yeah. he was warm with one there. thing that Robin needed, when yeah. when I was reading Death in the Family, I was, was like, like, wow, Ooh, yeah. he's got boy panties on. <laughs> and that's Awkward. that's not okay. So, <laughs> I was, in the course of the story, he, he can't convince Dick Grayson to be Robin again, but he convinces Dick Grayson to reconcile with Batman. And yeah. they, they team up, and he it's a little better, but by the end... Uh, Dick and Alfred convince Rob Batman to take on a third Robin, and they tell, tell him to take on this kid, Tim Drake, and that leads directly into the into the first Robin miniseries, which then led to him. Which I got for Christmas once. The like, first Robin miniseries. Yeah, my family has a great history of trying to buy me things they think I like, and mm -hmm. they bought me Robin, not knowing my not dislike for Batman, but it was very nice. I still have them. It's actually funny. Now I think about it. This this story here is the last time anybody wore this costume. Yeah. On a regular basis, because with the booties, Tim Drake wears it. Very briefly, he puts on the suit at the very end of A Lonely Place of Dying to yeah. help Batman, but then he immediately they, they switch him out to the new costume. So this yeah. is like really the last time you have the regular better costume. The new costume is way better. And that's yeah. classic, though. Yeah, it is. It is. Boy painting. With the sharp And arms. finally, we want to talk about something from a more modern time that's not in the 80s, which is something that you and I both read at the same time when it came out. Why you don't you tell the people about what these, these two books are? Uh, all Cataclysm over and, and No Man's Land were really big events in the Batman universe. Now, when I read comic books today and I see an event that's going to span over a bunch of issues and books of things that I don't normally read, hate and I, have to, I hate it. Because then I have to buy Birds of Prey issue 47 yeah. and I don't have any of the other ones and for some reason that bugs me. Yeah. Uh, but whenever I harken back to a good one, a really good one, I think of Batman Cataclysm and No Man's Land. You know what? This was a freaking miracle. It should not. It should it not. It shouldn't have worked. The thing yeah. that should not be. Because yeah. not only was it crossing over every Batman book, uh -huh. but it did it for like three years. It, yeah, was, it was a long a, time. Yeah. Because first, Cataclysm was the story was was a, a earthquake rocks. A Seven point six. Gotham City destroys it. L levels it. Yeah. And so, and No Man's Land. What comes out of that is 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 <laughs> this was just an odd conceit with this. It's DMZ almost. Well, yeah. no, but it's like, basically the, the destruction is so bad that the government and everybody goes okay. We're done with Gotham. Gotham's closed. Go <laughs> they home. They seal it off. Yeah. They blow the bridges. They say you're on your own because I forget why. But it's not really important. The point is, for many, for like a year or so, you had No Man's Land. It's in four trades, so it's mm -hmm. at least it's lots of issues. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is only volume one. Um, basically, it's it's Batman and his crew. This is when he had the whole army. He had Robin, Nightwing, Huntress, and Oracle, and mm -hmm. Batgirl. And, Chuck Dixon heydays. And yeah. and they were just basically keeping this No Man's Land of rubble. Safe and it was a great arc. It had a and whole then story. Two, Two Face rose to power. Every, and, and I mean, there was everything. Like, they the rearranged yeah. everything that happened. Yeah. It all the status quo was completely re reset. And the tragic ending at the end, when when someone very import important gets killed by the Joker. Do you remember that? No. I don't want to ruin it for everyone who hasn't read it, but the okay. girlfriend of later. some very important character with a mustache dies. Okay. 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 The, the wife, actually, the wife of someone with a mustache okay. gets killed. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and Superman had a hell of a mustache in Death. Oh, remember I remember that. Yeah. The character was also in Batman Year One, and she was killed. Oh. Remember by the Joker at the very end of No Man's Land? Yeah. Sorry. But listen to some of the names that worked on this. The writers were Dixon, Alan Grant, Devin Grace, and Doug, Doug Munch. Um, Klaus Janssen did some writing on this. Klaus Klaus Janssen's art, like, you can see that he did the inks for. But Frank listen Allen. to the, the artists, all right? Jim Aparo, was, he's the classic guy who did The Death of the Family. Uh, Eduardo Barreto, Mark Buckingham, Klaus Janssen did art, Scott McDaniel. Uh, Graham Nolan was doing all the really good detective books back then. Alex Maleev did all... I, I was going through this, and I saw Mark Buckingham's Batman. It were beautiful issues, yeah. and but the Alex Maleev stuff... Well, this whole trade in Volume 1 is Dale, Dale Eaglesham. Who, who's who's gotten better? And Alex yeah. Maleev. Oh. And it's just and it's, it's changed, not, but not necessarily. Got Malice's style is different. It's all photorealistic now, but but still cool. Really? This is this is him purely drawing, but it's still really really yeah, good. Yeah, it's very very now, good. And now this all laid the groundwork for the Rucka Brubaker yep. Gotham yep. coming out of this. Yeah. Brubaker now Rucka. Bob Gale is actually one of the writers on yep. this. Oh, yeah. now, it's funny because people are like, oh, Bob Gale from Back to the Future. He's done a lot of comics. Yeah. He's yeah. on Amazing Spider-Man nowadays. Yep. Uh, he did the Daredevil arc following Kevin Smith, yep. and he did these. Like yep. no one remembers that he did a lot of great work. Apparently, yeah. every time he comes back, it's like. Yeah, he did Back to the Future. But he's yeah. a lot of good this comics. was his best comic stuff. Remember this? Th mm -hmm. This was the signaling of the new like golden age. This started it. Yes. It went through this whole however many years this lasted. Then it went into Brubaker and Rucka, and that was like five like 
excellent yeah. Batman years. And, you could, and I remember coming out of it, um, Larry Hama took over yeah. Batman, and it just was like, oh. And I remember yeah. I stopped reading it at that point. Yeah. But yeah. for the whole first five years after I started reading comics so like Detective again, and Batman were mm-hmm. so good for five years. Like, this, yeah. is, this is what I still think... When it when it's rocky now, I'm like, why can't? And, it be Di- like and you know, it was? D- the other books were good. Dixon was on Nightwing, and he was on all of the satellite. Birds yeah. of Prey, and, and and they were all just yep. hitting on all. Cylinders. I remember you guys loving this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these are some great Batman stories. Um, there, I mean, there's so many. These are some of our favorites, and you can you can pick all these up if you want. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and come and go straight from the movie theater right to your comic store, yeah. right to Amazon.com. If you're not so much into the older stuff, because the '80s stuff you have to read it's in the eye. It's from the '80s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Check out Cataclysm and No Man's Land. You can you can skip Cataclysm, jump right into No Man's Land, just knowing that there's an, earth, an earthquake and that's just mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah, great Batman stories. Yeah, and, and at the very least, just pick up a Killing Joke. Yeah, yeah I was well, gonna say yeah, yeah, you need to own a Killing Joke. I mean, it's, just, all the it's ones a must here. have. Yeah. Yeah, totally. and, well, and again, while we didn't talk about it, you can search these and find lots about Dark Knight Returns in Year One. You yeah, read those and and if you like the pre- the first Batman movie, Year One was a strong influence, yeah. and and as was the right. Rajah Ghoul stuff. And, Fans and, of Dick Grayson, I'm not Dick Grayson. Tim Drake should read. A lonely, a lonely Place of Dying. Yeah. Joker fans should read a killing joke. Any comic fan should read a killing joke. If you yeah. like the international Ra's al Ghul stuff, check out Son of the Demon. Yeah. If you like the history of it, want to know what happened to Jason Todd, people like Jason Todd now who don't know yeah. that he was an asshole. Read uh, Death and the Family. He's an asshole now. It's going it's to be at least. People like it. It's going to be at least two or three years till the next movie. So, got to got to pass the time somehow. Yep. You know. So. Um, so no Man's Land can take you right up through that. <laughs> so if there are any Batman stories that, that you can think of that we didn't uh, Tell talk about here. Ones. Tell us your favorite one. Tell us your favorite one, too. We us... didn't forget them. We just chose these. Yes. Send an email to contact at ifanboy.com. And you can t- call us, leave us a voicemail, 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. And ifanboy.com is the website we do, and it's very good. Also, more <laughs> videos over revision3.com slash ifanboy. Forums and message boards and everything there. Yes. This is crazy. You love it, don't you? I love it. It's so good. It was really good. Ah, it's good stuff, right? Yeah, real good. Good, yeah. How about you over here? You doing all right? Maybe less creepy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I wasn't really expecting the massage. I like the fucking... <laughs> sexy voice. <laughs> it's like Mishesma. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel dirty. <laughs> Uh, Three, two. It's good stuff, yeah? Yeah.